Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, as part of our um, uh, contribution with the SCOPE event uh, featured by CAFRA, we will give you a sneak peek of uh, how it is um, in the life of a Filipino vapor. What are the motivations behind uh, switching from smoking to vaping? And uh, what are the struggles that they had to uh, go through? So today, we'll be hearing from uh, two Filipinos who regularly purchase and use vape products in hopes of further gaining perspective on vaping and its role in helping uh, smokers quit. First off, um, our one of the members of Vapers PH who will share her experience is uh, Miss Francine uh, Rivera. Hi, good evening. Yeah, good evening, uh, Francine. Um, how are you? I'm good. Uh, okay naman. Kao, how are you? <laughs> Ito, uh, it's been a while since I've last seen you personally. Yeah. Uh, it's good that uh, we have uh, avenues like this. Mm -hmm. um, let me just introduce our, our other guest. Uh, he has uh, stopped. Uh, smoking for the last two years and i know for a fact that he has struggled a lot in uh, his transition so uh, i'd like to welcome mr uh, seth galarosa hi seth hi good day everyone good evening peter hi, seth. Hi, uh, how, how 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 are you guys how are you guys coping with the pandemic How's the naman? missing the outside you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah but uh Ma okay naman kasi pababa na yung cases, so we're getting yeah. there. I, I really can't wait for the day that we'll be able to meet again in person. Uh, we have a lot of things to catch up. But uh, for today, for tonight, um, we have viewers all over Asia and all over the world. Um, I'd like to give them a preview or at least uh, realize and see what are the struggles of Filipino vapors? Let me start off with uh, with a few questions. Um, so let's start with ladies first, uh, Ms. Francine. Mm. No? So yeah. can you just tell us, um, were you a smoker before and uh, how long? And possibly um, also, can you include what motivated your decision to start vaping and quit smoking? And when, when did you realize that you had to make that switch? Yeah. Um, I started really young, actually, high school pa lang, second year high school, I started smoking na. Um, at first, syempre, I just, syempre, may bisyo ka, tapos nasa high school ka. So, syempre, gusto mo, sikat ka, di ba? So, all the cool kids dun sa school namin, smoke na. So, parang ako, as, as a person who wanted to belong, next start din ako. Pero kahit um, hindi pa ako ganun ka nung nun, kahit hitbo-hitbo lang, uh, hit-hitbo -hit ka lang, at least nakapag-smoke ka. But siguro nag, talagang nag-worsen siya for me nung college kasi, well, natuto na ako how to do it properly. At the same time, syempre, stress ng ACADS, um, nag-work na siya together. This, it was really bad to the point na mahina sa akin yung one box a day. As in, automatic yun, bibili ako ng new box the next day. Um, I slow, well, I had to, I had to start, well, switch to vaping when I got pregnant. Well, after I got pregnant. Um, of course, when I found out I got pregnant, I had to stop at, like, for, for all of it. But uh, after I gave birth, it, it still had the feeling that I needed to um, do something. Parang there's still a mannerism sa akin. So I, I tried vaping uh, for my friend's sake and of course my baby. Um, and after that, it stopped. I didn't go back to smoking na after that. Galing, galing. That's, uh, that's very good to hear. How about you, Seth? How, how, how long have you been smoking? And uh, 
what are your motivations? Bakit ka nag-switch? Right. Um, I actually started um, around 10 years ago. It was second, I was uh, second year college, a sophomore in college. And um, I started because of uh, stress from schoolwork. <laughs> and um, just so happened that I had really low grades that uh, that sem. So all the cool kids were doing it. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> as well as the upper upperclassmen, so I, they told me that it uh, relieved stress, so I tried it and uh, it felt good. It did relieve my stress uh, for a while, but um, fast forward ten years and uh, the pandemic happened. I was, and uh, I found myself in a a, a night shift uh, at work, and. Um, I found myself finishing up to like two boxes uh, a day uh, up to that. So I, I thought of stopping and uh, thankfully the, the people around me were vaping and they suggested uh, to suggested uh, vaping as well. And it mm -hmm. felt better since um, the I couldn't smell the cigarette smoke anymore. And um, I could work out after that was uh, that's actually the the biggest motivation for me because i lost uh, a lot of weight because i was able to work out um from vaping that's great uh, i've been vaping for a while but i have not lost as much weight as you did <laughs> i hope that uh, it will have a same the same effect on me also i mean I, i've known you for a while so when i have seen your your, your, your changes in your this critical um well bottom line is i think both of you were 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 were, were really hooked to cigarette smoking because of stress and because of school work and work and all that um this is a very quick question really um let's start with seth um have you completely switched to vaping or do you still use combustible cigarettes from 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 time to time and i know you've shared earlier uh, your your experience with vaping and with uh, cigarette and with uh, combustible cigarette smoking. Um, if you could just also compare the experience, um, what do you think are the pros and the cons of since you made the switch? Yeah, well, if you ask me, there are um, if you compare vaping with smoking, I think there are no cons because uh, ever since I started. Uh, vaping, I was able to uh, exercise more. Um, I was um, more social because I wasn't uh, embarrassed of the smoke. Because um, cigarette really does have this uh, certain foul smell that sticks to your clothes. Um, right. So without that, you can approach people more. And um, yeah. Um, I haven't switched. I haven't uh, switched back. Yeah, I can. I can uh, attest to this that I haven't smoked a single cigarette ever since uh, I started vaping, because uh, it. I, I remember the feeling of being drained uh, from from the stick. You see, um, great. Um, I mean, from 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 my perspective, the the main reason I made the transition or the switch from smoking to vaping is that um, when I had kids, I, I, I remember vividly, I was working in a call center before as a manager. And uh, like what you said earlier, there's tremendous pressure to deliver the numbers, key performance indicator, to manage the hot tires, all that stuff. Um, mind you, I, I was never a coffee drinker. But uh, when stress caught up, I, I, I always pair a brood, uh, sorry, iced coffee with uh, combustible cigarettes. That's my, that was my outlet. Whenever there's a big decision I had to make, I get ev all agents out of the smoking area and I'll just go there. And my boss knows if he, if he doesn't see me for like 30 minutes on the floor, on the operations floor, he already knows I'm mulling on something. So he'll go there. Um, but when I had kid, you know, my, my, my eldest son, 
um, I, I know almost everybody now has alcohol, right? Because of the pandemic. But during that time, I had alcohol in my car. I had to, you know, like take a bath in alcohol before I go back home. And I didn't realize the, the foul odor. I couldn't, when I get home, like 8 a.m. in the morning, I'm not allowed to hug my kid. Um, it's either I take, a, I take a bath first, or, you know. Even if you put alcohol in your hands, the, the smell is still there. And um, I realized that when I made the switch to vaping, because a few months in, I could no longer tolerate the, the, the lack of taste combustible cigarette. It's like burning paper. <laughs> that was my experience. And then, just to be honest, one to three months into vaping, out of curiosity, I just lit a cigarette to, to see if I can still enjoy it. And I just really can't. And the smell on my fingers, I think, stayed there for minimum of two days. I can still smell it. And uh, I have this rule. Uh, when I was still smoking combustible cigarette, I never, ever uh, lit a cigarette inside my car. I never did. Because I know that my wife will, will eventually ride there, my kid. So to me, that's, that's, that's the biggest motivation. And uh, I have not smoked a combustible cigarette for at least eight years. Uh, how about you, Francine? Um, how do you compare uh, your experience with vaping and cigarette smoking? Yeah. Um, I wish I had this thing to like say that I have been smoked a cigarette for, well, since I started. Pero it, it's really hard. Well, it's for me, it's a really big struggle having that. It was something that I relied on for a very long time. But... I'm proud to say that I only do it when, uh, first, when my vape doesn't have battery anymore and all my <laughs> friends out there don't have battery anymore. So that's the only time that I'm still drinking that I have to do something to lower the alcohol. But that rarely happens, especially now with the pandemic. I, I, will, I don't go out drinking as much as before. And uh, when I drink, uh at times i always carry an extra vape with me so i i lessen the smoke um yeah i completely agree with the kids and the smoke the older um i again i have a son uh he's three years old now and at first it was really hard um going home to your son and actually taking care of him at the same time the people around me and myself i could smell the odor uh, coming off of me and they would tell me that uh, I reek, that I, I really smell like I smoke. So it was hard for me. But with vaping, um, it, it really, I'm not as, um, I'm not as shy anymore when I go home after uh, just two minutes after vaping, it's fine. I would smell like strawberries and yakult all the time. Those are the go-to, so yeah. Okay, um, I think just to summarize what you both says, said, I think the main driver really of what I got from you and based on my own experience is we have switched from smoking combustible cigarettes to vaping, I think because of love. In Seth's case, the love for himself, being able to exercise, uh, of course, the smell is not there to physically transform to a much fitter person today. But to me, the love for my family, and I think also for friends, you know, the bottom line is <laughs> people can change. We can do better if the motivation is really strong, such as love, as in your case. <laughs> now, let me transition to... I think a very relevant question. And let's make it a bit more fun. Walk us through, and I hope Francine, Francine can answer this first. Walk us through on the very first time that you purchased your vape products. Hmm. How was it? How easy was it? Why did you choose such product? And uh, if possible, can you compare it now? Uh, I mean, we're at the pandemic. Are you still able to buy? 
the vape products that you, that you need. I mean, just just walk us through. Just give us a snapshot of how it was before and how it is now. Um, I remember my first vape. It was a pink caliber, the original one, the rose gold. Um, I actually didn't buy it. I actually asked for it from my cousin because he was using it. Um, I didn't want to spend money. I thought it was expensive. I didn't want to maintain the device. Um, I, I just really had bad thoughts about it because it it, it seemed expensive compared to like cigarettes. Right? So he told me that he'd give it uh, he'd give it to me for free, but I had to stop smoking, uh, mm. especially when I was with him. So he gave me that, and after that, I just it it. It kept evolving because um, I think the thing that draws me to vaping is well, one factor would be the look of it. Like it's it, it could, I could buy it in color pink. That's the thing. One, oh, yeah. It's well anything that's pink. It glows. Sa, uh, well, in my eyes. So it it lasted me for about a month. Then I bought my very own. I bought a Nord, Smock, uh, Smock Nord. Then it evolved to many more vapes. And the last vape I actually purchased was just yesterday. I okay. bought, a, yeah, I bought a Ursula Mini. That's still in pink um, with um, matching red juice. So when you look at it, it's just red and pink. So, so it, well, realizing it now um from what i expected uh, expected to be expensive and to maintain but at the same time now i just keep buying it and i can't stop and it was really actually fun for me to say uh, again i can customize it as much as possible so yeah but uh are, are you still able to uh, buy your 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 vape needs nowadays given the pandemic yeah um well I, I still can buy. I know shops near my place that I can purchase some. But at the same time, a lot of the shops around me have um, deliveries now. They actually give the option of deliveries. So, yeah. So it's much easier for me, even if I don't go out of the house, they can bring it to me instead. Okay, that's great. That's good to hear. How about you, Asset? Uh, walk us through. I mean, give us a snapshot of your first purchase of uh, vape yes. products and uh, why did you decide to buy that particular product because francis was saying it's more of fashion if it's pink <laughs> uh, for a lack of a better term no? so girly eh, di ba? <laughs> but, but, but it's, it's 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 just right but how about you seth i hope it's not pink <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's actually a similar story story to uh francine's um when i decided to quit smoking i was just borrowing my older brothers uh, relax and uh, I kept borrowing it and then uh, one day he just out of frustration he gave it to me uh, because I was using it so much um, yeah I was uh, using the, the original relax for a while um, I really liked it because it was so handy it was so small and um, you can just replace the pods um, I think I've used that original one for the first six months, <clears throat> and then I had to uh, go home to so to to my province, to Sorsogon. Um, just uh, for context, uh, my province is twelve hours away from from Manila, so it's it's a really far flung place, and I was uh, surprised that uh, when I um, inquired. Um, among my friends, if there's a there's a seller uh, for vapes, they told me that there was one, and uh, <laughs> I was able to get my fix for uh, for vape for the next six months again because uh, I made friends with with the seller there. In terms of uh, ease of uh, buying and availability, it's really available because it's so popular now. I um, I think. Cigarette smoking is frowned upon even in my province because uh, so many people are uh, are vaping. Uh, that's a very good point, uh, Seth, that you raised. 
that uh, the vaping nowadays is very popular. Yes. And I think what comes with that uh, popularity is the responsibility of consumers, the responsibility of the business owners in the vaping community, and the bottom line, the responsibility of the state, our government, uh, to take care of uh, its constituents, its constituents, uh, vapors and non-vapors alike. I'm sure uh, you've heard that uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, what you call this uh, laws being passed nowadays. There's a move to regulate uh, vapor nicotine products, whatever your picks are. Um, like you said, even your province, which is 12 hours away from the metropolis, they still have vape, the vape shops. Uh, you can get your fix pretty much from everywhere, and they do online. Um, let's start with Seth. What do you think about these regulations that uh, you're hearing? Are you against it, or do you support it, and why? Well, um, as a vapor, um, I, I see the benefits of... Um, creating laws that make vaping more available to people because I think about the experience that I have had and I want other people to experience it as well. Um, the, the change in lifestyle, the increase in energy. So I think um, laws that can um, make vaping more available and less restrictive to, to employees such as myself, to uh, mothers such as Francine and to family men like yourself can be very be beneficial to uh, society. Okay, that's a great point. Um, how about you, uh, Francine? What, do you support it? Yeah, uh, uh, I think, yeah, I do, man. Um, siguro, uh, well, for me, it does give a chance for, well, smokers to actually make the change. Um, instead of prohibiting everything, um, especially now, uh, well, you can't just smoke everywhere. Um, with that, a lot of people, I think, see the hassle of it, but at the same time, find it difficult um, having to abruptly stop. But with vaping, um, if uh, well, when the law allows it, it's easier for them to make the switch. Um, and, uh, at the same time, compromising for their switch. Yeah, I guess that. I, I, I totally agree with uh, what you both said, that uh, there really has to be a balance between you know, the regulation and the, for the consumers. I, 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 I just really hope that, uh, you know, a bill or a law gets passed that is, uh, you know, amenable to all the parties involved because uh, hearing your stories the things that both of you have gone through the transition doing it for family and all that i think there's a benefit with it um i just hope that everybody is as responsible as you guys are. because again i go back you did the transition from smoking combustible uh, uh cigarettes to uh, vaping altogether because of love and i remember an old old movie saying that it's the connect it's it's the uh, it's the one thing that connects the world it's love so there it's a final question to both of you uh tonight um there's two things number one uh, maybe Francine, you can take this. Would you say that you would be that you are spending lesser now when you're vaping as compared when you were buying regular uh, combustible cigarettes before? And do you see yourself quitting smoking or vaping altogether in the near future? Uh, well, for the first question, totally. Um, my exp again, as mentioned a while ago. I smoke a pack a day before. So a pack now could go up to 150 a day. Oh, well, a box. 
Um, but with vaping, I only spend 250 on juice. That would last, well, minimum, I guess, a week. But it's still a huge difference uh, well, surprises. Um, I do see myself stopping completely. Oh, I'm trying. I hope I do. Um, I'm trying my best to. Uh, it, it, it will come. I guess I'm compared to before, it did come. Um, but hopefully, I do completely stop. Okay, how about you, Seth? Yes, uh, same with uh, Francine. Um, I, I, I found myself, again, I found myself uh, smoking around two packs, two boxes a day. Uh, before, but then uh, I discovered vaping. I mean, the relax pods can cost up to about two fifty, okay. and that can last me around three or four days, maybe even a week if I'm not that stressed with work. So it's really a huge uh, saver for me. And um, good thing is uh, there are uh, bulk purchases, the the, the boxes. Mm -hmm. It comes in, so I can really save a lot uh, if I if I purchase uh, the box of ten. Um, in terms of quitting, I think yes, it is very possible because um, I I think I've lessened uh, smoking since quitting cigarette and then transitioning to to vaping and uh, exercise helps as well because uh, it's more available for me now, and I don't find myself craving it as much. Um, I totally agree with you guys. Um, I myself, um, I used to pack, I used to buy at least one pack of cigarettes or two packs of cigarettes per, per day when, when I still used to work in, in my call center. I, I was one of the managers. So you can imagine I start my day with coffee and probably two sticks of cigarettes. And whenever my boss wants to discuss something, it's the same thing. Um, I have no idea how much, you no, know, it's been that while. I, I, I don't have an idea now how much a stick of cigarette costs. Do you guys know? Eight, Any, pesos. eight pesos per? I remember First. during the time it was like one peso and 50 centavos. And these are the expensive ones already, yeah. Because when you just buy it really from you know the the, the local store, it's more cheaper. When you buy it in schools during my time, it's about one peso and fifty centavos, and I couldn't even afford it. So now it's eight. So that's a lot. So if you do one pack per day, it's about hundred and sixty pesos. So definitely, there is benefit with in in, in terms of uh, in terms of cost, and of course for our loved ones. And uh, finally, I agree with, with what you guys both said, that uh, hopefully we can all quit in the future for our loved ones. Any parting words before I close this, uh, Seth? Um, thank you for, for having us, Peter. Um, uh, it's really great to talk about vaping because it's, uh, it brought such a huge change in my life, honestly, um, from being overweight before uh, from uh, cigarette smoking and uh, switching to vape. I, I really attribute uh, my weight loss, uh, a huge percentage of it to switching to vaping because I was able to be freer with, with myself and with other people. So thank you. Francine? Uh, yeah, like Seth, uh, thank you for giving me a chance. I hope what with, with what we shared today um, we inspire someone to actually make the switch and hopefully we can um, all switch if possible, right? Thank you for that. Um, I hope I can lose as much weight as uh, Seth does and uh, I also hope I get as much love as Francine is getting from his loved ones. But altogether, um, we've seen the benefits. Um, what um, what we can get or what we had and we made that transition to uh, combustible to uh, vape uh, from combustible uh, cigarettes and I, I, I thank you guys uh, Seth Francine thank you for uh, sharing your experience and sharing it with 
with our viewers and our friends. Finally, in a perfect world, I think solving the tobacco smoking pandemic uh, would be as simple as just putting an end to the consumption of uh, tobacco products altogether. However, immediate cessation, like what we call a cold turkey, I don't think that it is feasible or sustainable for everyone. Mm -hmm. Effectively uh, addressing the issue uh, definitely requires a more complex and uh, strategic approach. Um, for the lack of time, I think, you know, we also have preference and uses, uh, certain flavors that we <laughs> adhere to. You know, I, I, I think that's, that's also part of the solution. So the use of alternatives, such as vaping, I think really assist smokers in quitting the habit. It will never be a perfect solution. To me, I don't think that there is a perfect solution to any problem. However, the approach to the problem must be in a pragmatic manner. We have to take into consideration our personal experiences, our personal biases. And um, I think when we do that, we stand to provide the more long-term and sustainable benefits for smokers and non-smokers alike. So again, I thank you, Seth. I think I thank you, Francine. Thank you, Peter. And uh, we hope to uh, have more discussions about this in the near future. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, Good night everyone.